Welcome everybody to another fabulous episode of Home Kit Insider. Here with me, as always, is Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? I'm doing. I'm fabulous. I couldn't tell if that was delicious. Fab. I mean, I guess something can be both. Fabulous. Absolutely. Fabulous. I can't speak. Anyway, uh, we have some news. Uh, especially, I really want to get to in a few moments. Sonos taking on. Uh, some of Apple's products, especially the headphones thing, as the latest rumor from last week. But as we talk, as our listeners listen to this very episode and watch it, it is Cyber Monday. I don't know why we still use the word cyber in the year 2023. I feel like it, it gets used here and for cybersecurity, even though it feels like a very old term. But cyber Monday. Jo-jo. Need like a sound effect. Cyber Monday. Uh, so there are some deals. I know there's also deals from like a bunch of like smart home brands. The car's got deals. I think Eve's got deals. All of that. Uh, but tell me about these indie app sales. This is the first I'm hearing of this. What say you? So this is really cool. This is, um, I actually don't know who facilitates this, I guess. Um, but I know it from uh, Matt Corey sends this out to me. And he is the developer behind, um, I believe, like the Home Signals app. Yes. Is the one that he does in the smart home space. So basically just a group of Indie devs get together to put together these massive lists. Uh, as you can see uh, for the people watching, where Steven has pulled up 322 participating apps for Amazing. Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So these are running now from like when we're recording this until November 28th, I believe. And there is a ton here. So yes. you can filter uh, if you're Steven and you yes. have this pulled up. But I've already done it, so you can see we have like things like Home Cam, Home Log, Home Pass, Home Run. All of the Aaron Pierce apps are on sale. Home Batteries that we've talked about, that's 30% off. So like 3 bucks down to 2 bucks. Um, controller for HomeKit, 66% off a yearly subscription on that guy. Um, Signals for HomeKit, of course, is on there. Um, 40% off that one for the in-app purchase like there there's a bunch there's a ton 300 and some apps uh that encompass everything including all these smart home ones as well as other ones we love indie devs so if there's anything we can do to throw a little traffic their way and highlight some amazing apps i'm gonna do it so be sure to check that out um these run through again november 28th if you want just some good deals on some great apps this is amazing highly recommend so many of these home pass my goodness Key, key yeah. app. If, if you, you somehow have... don't have that already, do it now on oh Cyber Monday. Goodness. It is amazing. And there's actually an Apple Watch component to that app, which is great because sometimes maybe you have to factory reset a HomeKit device and you need the pairing code, but you're also on your phone and you're trying to pair it. And the Home app is so like, if you're pairing a device, you can do nothing else but pair this device. You can't swipe up to go home. You can't do anything or it'll stop the whole pairing process. And so being able to, on your watch, pull up the home pass, even a QR code, and just and then pair you know, with your iPhone, it's awesome. So highly recommend home pass. I actually, I mean, I have a lot of Aaron Pierce's apps like home cam. I don't even know what home log is. Home <laughs> log is this, is this? It's it's definitely on the, the, the more niche side of smart home tech here. Um, I have played around with this, but yeah, you can kind of see all the signals and commands running to your smart home stuff. When I was having Whoa. issues... Um, which eventually was tracked back to my Eve button sending right. or delayed commands. Um, this is one of the things that I was using to try to troubleshoot it of like what was kind of oh. going on in my smart home. So yeah, it's, it's a neat little uh, handy utility. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Great apps uh, on this list. So go get them. Go get them all. Support HomeKit developers making apps and such like that. Uh, now, you also, is there an Air Versa uh, sale here as well for Cyber Monday? Yeah, so th- the biggest thing that, we, that I want to mention is that Apple Insider has, like, Black Friday, Cyber Monday guides, and they're, like, yes. live updating. Like, we update them throughout the day as stuff sells out or we find more things. So, like, I, I just had the Air Versa Humel thing in here because the one that I knew off the top of my head, like the new uh, AH1 humidifier, I believe that's the one that looks like Johnny Ive designed it. Yeah, those things are depending on the color, like under a hundred dollars. So they're going from like one twenty down Ooh. to like ninety five dollars or something, depending on your color choice. Wow. Uh, but like twenty percent off, and then the smart purifier, the Purell AP2. I have it right here off screen uh, yes, that yes. I run. 
here in the studio. That thing is also 20% off, so $170 down to $135.99. Uh, so some uh, discounts on those guys. But if you check out like Home Get Apple Insider, there is a running guide. We'll put it in the show notes um, so you can just jump to it. But as we find smart home stuff throughout the day, check back there. Yes. I mean, we're specifically looking at stuff for Apple users and HomeKit stuff. So if that's kind of what you're in the market right. for, check that out. Do it. Do it. Cool. Well, links will be in the show notes. Now, this next thing, it's called the Breve Pro. Unlock the power of plants. That seems like, a, you know, I need like a voiceover movie trailer voice. Unlock the power of plants. I don't even know what this thing is. It looks like a bubble that you put some plants in and it sits next to your bed, I guess. What is this, Andrew? I don't know. So we covered the original Breve here on the podcast a while ago. And the Breathe is a very eco-friendly air purifier. So okay. unlike your standard purifiers that have a lot of you know, what other carbon fiber stuff in their HEPA filters and a lot of plastics and things like that, um, this thing is designed to be super duper eco-friendly. So you have like a multi-stage filter there at the top. You have like organic moss there at the top. Doesn't smell like anything. And that'll take out your larger particles in the air. Then it's going to go through like a... Uh, coconut husk something i can't remember what the, the <laughs> filters are on this but it goes through like these really sustainable filter options that are all natural and easy to replace they're good for the environment at the bottom is your actual hepa filter which is literally it's like a folded piece of paper in there that's going to get out your fine particles and everything is going to run through so it's got like okay. all, it's all your standard filtration here but from a much more eco-friendly approach it's got like recycled glass for that top dome that looks really nice um Hmm. all much more sustainable compared to your typical air purifiers that are out there. So this is their new one. This is the Breathe Pro that is currently launching on Kickstarter. So this does have some other smart home integrations out of the gate. It does work with the Amazon Assistant. Um, now, I don't know if this was supposed to be... They didn't say, don't say this, so I'll say it. Um, they <laughs> say... They are working, so after the Amazon Assistant is, is done for a launch, they'll be adding, hopefully, Matter and HomeKit, or they'll be looking okay. at adding Matter and HomeKit. So this, okay. I think, will eventually, don't don't buy it with that. As always, you know, don't buy something now at the promise of tomorrow. But yeah. I genuinely really like the original Breathe, and the Breathe Pro looks really sleek well, sleek as well. Lots of cool stuff there. Um, there's, like, an AI component to help it filter intelligently and not just run unnecessarily kind of spinning up when it needs to and down when it doesn't need to um but yeah it's really quiet it looks great this new one has a spot where you can add essential oils so it's actually going to clean your air and then like infuse it with nice smells so it can make your house smell good too so they say oh, it's yeah. an air quality sensor an air purifier and a fragrance diffuser all in one and it looks really cool so that's um, pretty cool i found what these are so the top of it the moss is Sphagnum moss, S P H A G N U M moss. So that your large thing is pollen, allergens, pet dander. Then there's the coconut husk layer, which is going to pull out dust, dirt, and smoke. And then your nano matrix at the bottom, which is kind of like your HEPA filter situation. Hmm. And it's all done using 90% uh, natural filter materials. So wow, wow, very impressive. All from the little plants. Those little plants. Okay. Well, that's very cool. Uh, that will link to the uh, Kickstarter will be in show notes. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if it gets matter. But speaking of matter, actually, another update got matter recently, which is the Hue contact sensor. Philips Hue launched this, uh, I don't know when, like a little while ago. And I guess it didn't have support for Apple Home, but now it does because they updated it uh, with matter and such. It's a $40 contact sensor. Um, not the most inexpensive, not the most expensive, but Hue stuff, as we've talked about in previous episodes, they are some of the fastest to respond and some of the most solid connection. Again, it's using the Philips Hue hub, uh, which is part of that reason. But nice to see another contact sensor. And uh, this one, I don't know, it looks kind of interesting. The the square, very squarish, very square, uh, which is fine. But yeah, 40 bucks on Amazon. You can get it right now. Do you have one of these? Contact sensors? Um, I don't, mainly because I just have so many contact sensors that I yeah, didn't yeah. jump on another <laughs> one, despite me being a huge fan. 
oh, all their other products. Wow. So that, I really oh. like every other Hue accessory. Their motion sensors are uh, insanely quick. So I, I do like their things, but yes. I did not pick one of these up. So I actually had no idea that it didn't have HomeKit or Mattersport at launch. <laughs> right. Uh, that pun. I'm, it's going to take me a second to get over that one. That that was. You're welcome. That was. <laughs> that was hugely satisfying anyway the, there's the hue motion uh, mo no contact sensor contact sensor uh, the motion sensor is a different thing which is also very good also uh lifex they've released a new string lights but this is for australian consumers which lifex is here in the states they have bulbs and such like that but apparently this is just for uh the australian crowd which we do have listeners over there we've had people leave five star reviews from all the way from australia and so if you're over there uh across the larger pond down under uh, I didn't want to do an accent. I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, you got a new light strip here <laughs> from Lifex. So, uh, boom. There you go. I uh, will say, uh, this, this is not on topic, but, you know, we, we talked about lights last week, um, you know, holiday lights, putting them outside your house, and the Govi ones. And we had a, someone else ask, like, do, does Govi have matter lights or whatever? And it really looks like... There is the, the Govi outdoor light strip with matter, but it's like the most expensive thing available. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's oh, Govi outdoor lights matter. I'm go live Googling here on the show. Uh, they of course, are, everyone loves yeah, yeah. to watch a live Google happen. <laughs> Everybody loves. It's the permanent outdoor lights, and they're like, oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, these are the Govi permanent outdoor lights. They're several hundred dollars, but there is a version with matter. It's just the most expensive one you can get. Honestly, I would still love these. Um, I am someone who really likes doing the permanent outdoor lights, but yeah. I've also been someone who's too cheap to install the proper ones. <laughs> so you end up in a situation where you have really shoddy lights installed in a semi-permanent way that you eventually need to replace. And if I sound curmudgeonly about it, it's because that's my situation at the moment. And we put them up like four years ago, and they they are finally like dead. So I'm going to have mm. to replace all of like our outdoor lights that had gone around our uh, roof and everything this year. And I don't want to do it. So uh, buy the correct <laughs> ones if you're going to do something like that. But I like them because they're simple. And with, with lights like this, you can always use them... Um, other times of the year because they can just look nice and then you can always like throw up colors and stuff during the holidays um, I yes. would throw up um, uh, like I would change I'll change like my hue spotlights that I have on the house I'll change those to like orange during Browns games or during Halloween time and then when we get into like the Christmas holiday season I'll change them to red and green on the front of the house so you can right. do something similar with lights like this so I really like the the permanent fixed lights yeah, and I, I was really trying to find the ones with matter. There is a version with matter. It is like six hundred dollars, I think. You do get like two hundred feet of lights, but I just can't seem to find it right now. But anyway, it, it's out there. Just to spend the most amount of money. That's how you know you got the right one. Just kidding. Don't follow that advice. Anyway, <laughs> look look for the matter ones. All right, we have to talk about these Sonos rumors for twenty twenty four. But before we do, este episodio te lo trae Babel. We hadn't guessed. This episode is brought to you by Babbel, but as you see, I said it in Spanish. Maybe you didn't catch that. Wow. That's <laughs> impressive. It was flawless. Porque yo puedo hablar español porque Babbel. Uh, see, I, I dos two, two things in Spanish. Listen, I... my, uh, my parents dos things, Stephen. Dos. Oh, sorry, sorry. You would sorry, learn no. that if you would listen to more Babbel. Todo estadios. No, thing, okay, I'm not going to try anymore because I'm going to say <laughs> things I don't intend. But listen. We're heading into the holidays. Maybe you got a, some free time. Maybe you have some travel plans for next year in 2024. What better way to prepare for a great trip or if you're going to another country than learning how to speak the language of that country you're going to? Or maybe you just want to learn another language because family members, maybe older family members speak a language. I know all my grandparents were fluent in Spanish. It was their first language. I learned it in school. I did pretty good. But honestly, I wish I had Babbel uh, back then. But we didn't even have phones back then. That's how old I was. Imagine a time uh, without phones. But why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are a little more than Gabe's, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language. That's idioma in Spanish. That's how you say language in Spanish. In as little as three weeks. And it's designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, 
rooted in real life situations and the app is great also you can talk into the app it'll hear you and even give you tips on your accent which is wild and so just a great way to learn a new language studies from yale michigan state university and others continue to prove babble is better i like that alliteration for instance one study found that babble for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college with over 10 million subscriptions sold babble is real language learning for real conversations so here's a special limited time deal for HomeKit Insider listeners. To get you started right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for HomeKit listeners at babbel.com slash HKI. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash HKI, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash HKI. Rules and restrictions apply. The link's in the show notes. You can just click it there, babbel.com slash HKI. Gracias, Babbel, for sponsoring this episode. I didn't have that part in Spanish. I couldn't say it off the top of my head. But gracias. I can say that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got to talk about this Sonos. Sonos, next year, is aiming to release their own pair of headphones, competing with the AirPods Max. Also, their own set-top box to compete with Apple TV. The over-the-air headphones are going to be right in that AirPods Max 400 to $500 range. Those headphones could arrive in April 2024. And also their set-top box, which might not be till very late next year, uh, but I am very, very curious about Sonos doing this. And now you, you've you long heard that Sonos was doing headphones. Or is this something you've expected for a while? Tell me your background. This has been long expected. I remember, so I was at the original Sonos Move launch in New York back in like, I think it was like 2019. It originally mm. launched that one. So four years ago, more than four years ago now. And th- there are people there talking about it and employees were like yeah we can't say anything like it was just (laughs) it was like a very hushed thing but it was like kind of like an open like we're working on these type of situation and i'm i've been so excited because i've been there's a lot of headphones right i mean sonos says you know your your smart home setup great and i'm very curious at what their headphones would 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 look like or do differently. Now, the one thing that I have heard Mm. that they would do that differs is basically make it so you can seamlessly pass off audio from your headphones to your Sono speakers, like seamlessly. So like Mm. you're, you're listening on your sound system and then I don't, you do something, you say, Hey, Sonos or whatever. And it transfers to your headphones and you can continue listening to me. That's eh, that's not like a, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not going to do that frequently. Um, right. but that sounds like they're one differentiating feature, and I'm curious at what else they yes. will offer. And they would also, I mean, you know, one of the nice things about Apple TV and AirPods is that tight integration where if you want to watch your content but have headphones because the kids are asleep or whatever late at night, like I imagine Sonos is going to be able to work that in if you also have like a Sonos Arc or a Sonos Beam but they'll be able to throw that audio to a pair of headphones seamlessly, which is pretty nice. I'm curious. I can the, see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, that definitely makes sense. I, I can see them doing that, but is to me that almost was a feature of like their set top box. Like, is it going to be a feature of both? True. Like, you know, is it just mm. the box or is it going to work with the sound bars and everything too? I guess it would, if it'll work with your regular Sonos speakers. Right. I don't know. That is true. I, it would be cool. Like, with a Sonos, well, just to talk about the headphones again for a second. Hardware-wise, I'm very curious. I really love Sonos hardware, but of course, all we've ever seen hardware-wise are speakers, and maybe at the other, at the most, like speaker stands is the other thing that they make <laughs> and sound bars. But their hardware is always top-notch, always super high quality, and I'm I'm curious what they would look like. And I imagine they would have USB-C, which would be an advantage over AirPods Max if we ever get a version two of those. Uh, but I'm. I imagine they'll also sound incredible because when it comes to sound quality, again, that's where Sonos, I think, really shines. And uh, we both have those systems. The home theater systems sound great. And so I do think audio quality, it's going to give AirPods uh, a run for their money. Maybe the maybe the first major company. I don't want to. I have not tried a ton of over-the-ear headphones. I know Bose is out there. Sennheiser's out there. Obviously, the Sony XM4s and 5s. I haven't tried a lot of those. But when it comes to sheer audio fidelity, I feel like a lot of people say the AirPods Max is on the top end of that. But I imagine Sonos would be the one brand to kind of get into that same lane and, and give AirPods Max some real competition. So 
I don't know. That's curious. I'm excited for it. I'm gonna get him. I see. Okay, but there's a there's a couple more. Th <coughs> Sorry, a couple more things with this. So first, when you look at all the different headphones on the market, when I'm trying to pick one out, like if I was trying to just to pick a set of over the top headphones, I want like that feature that's going to draw me to them. So with the AirPods Max, the benefit is just Apple ecosystem stuff. We're, we're looking at that really tight integration, effortless handoff between every single Apple device that you own, really nice and smooth, all of those kind of nice features to it. Um, if I look at third party headphones, I usually would go to like the XM4s or 5s because their noise cancellation on the over the heads is amazing. Right. It's like arguably the best out there, I think better than the AirPods Max. And then the mm. other ones that I would choose would be any of the ones from Master and Dynamic because not only is their sound insanely good, it's probably some of the best that I've listened to, but also their design is incredible with like super nice leathers and metal. Like they look cool. They even did like a Leica collab that is some of my favorite ha uh, headphones that I've got hanging around. So mm. I look at those. So like if I go to the, the Sonos, I'm like, what is this going to offer that's different? And right. Like, right now, I can't see something that unless they, they, they if they boasted like better ANC, I, there's already insane ANC out there. So I'm not like yearning for better noise cancellation. Like I, I don't feel like it's lacking in any way. So I'm just, I'm just curious. The one thing that I think people want is like lossless audio. And you can do this with mm. some because you can get like Aptex HD and those things on not Apple devices because we don't support it. And if anyone's going to support lossless audio, it's going to be Apple. With, right. Without, like they're going to have to have their new chip. I mean, we already have lossless audio with the second second generation <laughs> AirPods Pro. <laughs> right. 2.1. You yeah. know, going to Vision Pro, so I can see right. Apple eventually incorporating that same chip from Vision Pro into you know iPhones and Macs and everything, and eventually it'll we'll have lossless audio that way. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, the the Sonos ones will need to have like incredible transparency mode because I do feel like that is one place where AirPods Two and AirPods Max really shine. Like transparency is just amazing on those devices, and so really needs to have a good transparency mode as well as obviously good noise cancellation and so we'll have to see uh, if Sonos does that but I'm equally interested in the set-top box that Sonos might make a like where is it going to compete on price is it going to shoot for like $150 to 200 Sonos sells premium products I mean their stuff is premiumly priced so I imagine it would go for that higher end if so I am just so curious what UI and software design it would put into this thing Obviously, they've never made a set-top box before, but we do have a Sonos app, which you use for all the Sonos gear. And I will say Sonos has really good design, and especially when managing something as complex as like a multi-speaker, multi-room setup as Sonos, having to integrate Apple Music and other services all in one app. Sonos does a pretty good job, but it's also not a ton of UI. Like that app on your iPhone, it's not like super complicated. There's not like hundreds of pages of UI. And when it comes to a set-top box, obviously it's gonna, they'll probably run some fork of Android, I imagine. Or maybe they'll develop their own thing. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm just so curious what that UI will look like usability-wise. Maybe they even announce a partner or two. I mean, like, if they would announce that, like, Netflix or other partners will integrate into their, like, Watch Now or homepage thing, that would be curious. Uh, those kinds of announcements. So I I'm just very curious to see what they're going to do. It's going to be interesting. I don't know. Once again, I feel like Sonos is similar to Apple and that they don't do something until they have a way of doing it well. Like I, they didn't rush even to like a portable speaker until they came out with the move. And it was a very different than a lot of the other ones out there. It had a, you know, high end premium price tag, but battery life, water resistance, sound quality, everything was just, you know, top notch on it. And when we look at a set top box, like what's it going to do differently than an Apple TV is going to do? And yeah. I mean, if they were to announce that Netflix was going to incorporate into some sort of watch now interface, that's a big old middle finger because they haven't done that to literally <laughs> anyone because they want right. just to stay in Netflix. They don't want right. you to go to any other apps. So I can't imagine their set top box is anything other than a, a grid of app icons, just another place to get the exact same apps that are already available on your smart TV, let alone Apple TV, Fire Stick, Roku, uh, yeah, pick up one of those great new Zumo boxes. Yeah, Zumo box. 
<laughs> Which would, it would just begs the question then why would they even do this if they're not going to do something special about software? Because hardware wise, Sonos speakers are already work great with whatever system you have. You know, that arc channel from a TV works with whatever set top box you have. And like, there's no, like, don't need anything more. Like my Sonos B, my Sonos Arc, it all works great with no other hardware but the sound bar itself. And so I imagine they're, they, they're, they have to be going to do something interesting uh, with the set-top box. Again, more integration with their speakers. I don't even know if that's necessary because, again, they work great just with the TV and set-top boxes you have. So very curious what they're going to do there and announce. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. Exactly. Sonos. Like you said, it just, they have to do something that's unique to differentiate right. from themselves because especially with Sonos, they do premium hardware. Like they don't do, they're not going to compete with a Fire Stick. They're going to be directly competing with an Apple TV. And right now, I cannot imagine in my head what that would be like as a product that would compel me over from something like an Apple TV if I was in the market for a premium box. And I don't even know right. what other integrations it would be other than just casting from your like box directly to your Sono speakers. Like, but but you don't need to do that because then you wouldn't, it would kill any other inputs on your TV unless that box sat in the right. middle and it was like just the arc out from your tele. I don't know. I don't Maybe know. Uh, this is a wait and see situation. <laughs> I just came up with a theory. Maybe. We talked about this a number of months ago, but Adobe Flex Connect, Dolby Atmos Flex Connect, which would allow you to connect multiple speakers of varying brands to your system for a you know fuller Dolby Atmos experience, maybe they want to build a set-top box so they can be the first or one of the early adopters of this Flex Connect technology. Which again, I understand there's already like kind of a conflict there. Like I don't know why Sonos would make it easier to use other speakers that are not theirs in their own home theater system, but maybe maybe there's something there that their speakers are going to support it. Maybe you need to buy a Beam or an Arc in order for Dolby Atmos Flex Connect to work so they can at least get you into buying a set-top box and a, and a sound but bar. I, mean, I don't know. The Flex Connect, I think, is to make it go directly to your TV, not require a set-top box. So, mm. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, it's built into the TV. I don't know. It's, it's curious. It's curious, especially this late in the game to be getting into this when so many TVs just have all this stuff built in. But what were you going to say? Yeah. One more thing, so we can move on from Sonos Insider. Yes. Um, we also <laughs> didn't talk about much. This is this is honestly, I think, other than the headphones, which I am, you know, optimistically excited about. This right. is what I'm excited for. There is that little line in there about a new high-end sound bar. We could be getting oh, a new sheesh. second gen Arc or a new, I don't know. But I love my Arc is one of my favorite smart home products, and I would love to see, you know, I mean. Just a new version would be incredible. Just to boost that audio quality even more. I love the arc with the bass, with the sub. Like, it's great. Need, and if we had a, a new version, I would be all, all over it. An even higher in sound bar, this sounds very exciting. It would be $10,000. $10, it doesn't need 000. to be a higher end. It can just be a set. Like we have a second gen beam. Give That's us true. a second That's gen true. arc. Like, second we can only just arc. improve that, that channel separation even more. Right. Um, you know, Make it six space. feet long. Six foot long arc. I'd be down for it. No, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm excited to see what, what that's going to be coming next year. So we have several months uh, before we hear about that. But now you have a couple hands-on uh, mini reviews. I don't know what any of these words are, and so I'm very excited to see it uh, for the first time. <laughs> What's uh, Lomi? What is this? Oh, that's, Yeah, so uh, we yeah. talked about the OG on the podcast when it launched oh, right, uh, right, right. a while ago. This is the new second generation Lomi Bloom. I don't know if they call it second gen or if they just call it the Lomi Bloom, but it's essentially a second gen device. So this is okay. your this is a a countertop composter, and I have been using the original one constantly, constantly. Wow! And uh, I very much like it. So I was excited when they came out with their new second generation model. The Lomi Bloom, which comes in this nice new sage green, as well as like nice. white and black colors. Um, some improvements over the original one. So this one is Wi-Fi connected, so you can control it and view status and everything from your phone. And it's not just doing that for like just annoyingness sake. Um, they at least one point had told me that they were looking at, you know, connected integrations like shortcuts or matter or anything like that. So that's always interesting to see how that could play out. 
Um, they'd even mentioned HomeKit, like when I talked to like their CEO or founder like a couple years ago. It was something they were exploring. Uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen or not, but it was just a curious kind of musing. This new version has a clear top, so this comes off. It's clear, so you can actually oh. see how this is working. So, you know, throw your bell peppers, eggshells, banana peels, coffee grounds, you know, chicken scraps, and just watch as it kind of turns into dirt. And honestly, that was one of the things that I really missed on the first one, was I wanted to see, like, what's it doing in there? And I, I actually had wondered if I could put a camera in there somehow, but it's going to be pitch black. There was no way to do it. But I was just very curious at, like, just how it did it. Because yeah. it doesn't even look like the same thing when you put in this pile of food and then it comes out as just straight dirt. Amazing. I was very curious like how it did what it did. So Wi-Fi connected to the app. Clear top that you can see. There's a cleaning mode on this to help sanitize and clean it. Um, this also has this new reward system to help incentivize use incentivize use even more. So every, every time that you run the Lomi Bloom to turn your food into compost, you actually earn points. And those points you can use to redeem for like free products. They partnered with a bunch of other like eco-friendly smart home brands, like the Rise Garden is in there. And you can get discount or free products just by composting your stuff. So you're already doing good for the environment. You're helping your plants and gardens and everything with actual fertilizer and nutrients. And then you're getting discounts on other things. So it's just a lot of really cool things. So I'm not saying you 100% need to upgrade from like an original Lomi because these aren't cheap. But if you right. were on the fence before, this one is one that I That's would jump fun. on. I think it's really cool. <laughs> That's fun. Now, once it makes dirt, like mm -hmm. how how often do you have to take the dirt out because it's full of dirt? Yeah, so basically, so they say you can run the same dirt through the Lomi three times um, before, before I don't know, stop basically. It turns but into an next, I next will. Yeah. I don't. We don't. I don't have enough scraps that I put in the Lomi that I do it super frequently. So it's going to depend on how much you cook and how much that you run it. So okay. we have the chicken. So a lot of stuff I will use for chicken food when possible. And then when I right. can't use it for chicken food, that's when it'll go into the Lomi. So like things like you know bread scraps and all that stuff goes to the chickens. But eggshells and coffee grounds and banana peels. Um, you know, meat scraps, all of that I'll throw into the Lomi and that gets run. So I'll run it probably every couple days. I'll like toss some stuff in and just put the lid on. And then in a next day or so, put a little bit more in and then I'll run it. And then sometimes I'll have like a layer of dirt on the bottom and then some food stuff on top and I'll just um, run it again. So I'll probably go like a week or so running it three times. So okay. some of the same dirt is from that original run and then I'll have like more and more food that I'll keep adding on top and running it subsequent times. And there's three different modes. There's like an express mode that's really fast in like an hour or two. There is mm. like the Lomi certified mode or Lomi preferred mode. And then there's like the grow mode, which takes like up to like 11 to 17 hours, depending on what's in there. Um, and that's what I use, which gets you the most nutrients for your garden. And in the winter time, when I don't have gardens, Lomi recommends just taking it and storing it in basically a bucket. So I okay. have just a five gallon bucket that I'm just filling up with compost and it's going into all of our gardens here in the spring. Like we've been planting cool. a bunch of stuff. I have new gardens out back that we're putting in. So this is going to be really nutrient rich soil to mix into the gardens. It's also great for your house plants, which is crazy because I'll take the house plant trimmings, throw them in Lomi, and then <laughs> I get this up and I just put it right back into the it's plant the and they've been thriving. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insane. It's so cool. Wow. That, honestly, that is pretty cool. And yeah, my, my mother-in-law composts like a fiend. And she has like one of those big like turny things no, outside. not doing it. <laughs> exactly. They smell. So much work. They are hard to do. They're yes. gross. <laughs> and, she doesn't, and she doesn't go out there very often. So she'll like keep the compost somewhere inside until she's ready to bring it all out. But then you got compost just sitting around. Like I, I 
really curious if she would actually use something like this because then you can literally take it from the loamy and just put it in your garden beds right like yeah you can just go like, the reason the reason right i ahead. don't do that like right away in general is just because of our dogs so so generally the dirt doesn't smell like anything it basically smells like dirt but there was like okay. one time when i put in a stupid amount of like meat and there had to be like plenty of grease in there and stuff and it just smelled like food and they wanted to eat it so oh, I now i don't just do that because they'll just jump into like the garden beds and start trying to eat it if they're if it right. was like extra greasy or something that particular run but for yeah, the most part it doesn't smell like anything it just looks and smells like dirt so that's why <laughs> i just build up just dump it into a bucket for right now so the dogs mm-hmm. don't eat it and then it'll go out there in the spring but oh, you could, so like good. you don't have to do that you can just take it out fill it, and just dump it into your house plants and your gardens every time you run it and that's perfectly fine that's awesome well, very cool. Well, we'll put a link to Lomi. Uh, it's, I'm eyeing it. I'm eyeing the Lomi. Uh, and before we get to the other uh, mini review, I just need to ask, what's that shirt about? Because it looks cool. I want to know what that shirt is. <laughs> oh, this is, this is if, if anyone watches my shirts, they're going to be basically like brewing companies or distilleries oh, okay. or, uh, or like tech shirts. So this is from a company called High Camp Flasks. I should just oh. be a ba- brand ambassador for them because <laughs> I have so many of their things. And I really okay. like this tea, so I got it. But they, no, it looks, yeah, they've got lots it looks of cool. I, I like the design on top. I thought it might be like a like a state type thing, Rocky Mountain or whatever. I wasn't well, sure. I mean, so. We're very outdoorsy. Like we travel and stuff a whole lot, and we also yeah, yeah, yeah. like distilleries. So it worked like <laughs> double whammy. I saw the shirt. I'm like, I really like that shirt, so I bought it. Yeah, that's cool. No, I just just was curious. Okay. And uh, a last little mini review: Journey MagSafe gear. This is a brand I don't think I am familiar with. Is this a new thing, Journey? Journey's been around for a couple of years, and they so there's like two different brands. Um, I assume this is public information, but they they um, we'll find they're, out. Are, they're sister brands with a Logic, so a Logic oh. makes like Thunderbolt docks and things like that, and then Journey is like their more consumer side of like accessories. So two things to look at. So first, we can look at their Nexa laptop sleeve, which is oh. right here. Okay, very nice. You got this heathered material here on the back, and then on this side, like a vegan leather, super soft. Looks pretty standard as far as a laptop sleeve goes. And you're like, why is he talking about a laptop sleeve? But it's because right here in the flap are two wireless chargers. Oh, so it actually word. has a MagSafe compatible charger, and then your AirPods charger here at the top, Jeez. and then it just connects. There's a little USB port here on the side so it can just plug into your laptop so the idea is you carry around your laptop with you you open this up you pull out your new space black 16 inch macbook pro that's right slide that out of there looks very nice just set this on whatever surface you're going to do and then you have a charging pad for your iphone and your airpods right there wherever you go flip it around it works the opposite direction um nice soft mobile just really smart way to build that in to a laptop sleeve that you're carrying around of course the downside here is that you're looking at uh seven and a half watts of power for the charger because it's not actual magsafe magsafe compatible but right right. still easy way and you're drawing off of your laptop power um i mean you can plug it into whatever you want but if you're like on the go and you're you're just plugging into your ipad or laptop uh you don't need to steal too much juice anyway if you're trying to work on the go but for the 16 inch macbook pro you got some juice to spare there that's fun okay that's a cool sleeve i'm down for that and what, what else you got there something else from journey yes we ready to go here it is okay i really like this one this is the what's the what are the what's the name i wrote i can't find my note alti ultra yes this is a desk mat okay desk mat that's got so many cool smart things with it so first it's reversible, vegan leather on one side, or really nice wool on the other. And Ooh. they're even like, people like it a lot because you can change it based on the season. So if it's cold, mm. 
put the mm-hmm. wool side and it's like warm and cozy. And then in the summer, you have like the cool vegan leather surface that you can work off of. So you can mm-hmm. choose the one you want and they're split. So you can actually tuck things inside of it. So you can pop up the side and put like sticky notes or, you know, write mm-hmm. down all of your master passwords, whatever you want to do to like tuck them in between. So you got some like extra storage for papers in yes. between the two. But check out this side here. It's a little bit thicker, and if you see from this side, you got a little, little edge. Oh, That's because yeah. we have this. This is the extra cool part. It magnetically connects on your desk, not awkwardly when I'm trying to hold it on camera, right, but you right. have an actual Apple certified MagSafe puck for 15 watts of power, and then your secondary AirPods charger. So this is like your desk mat. It sits there on your desk, magnetically connects, so you can pull this even off and just use this by its own vegan leather on the top. It actually feels really nice and soft surface. And then you can charge your iPhone on here. And That's I fun. really like that because I don't, one, you don't have to deal with an extra wire because it routes right out, right there out the back. So you yeah. have that plugged in on your desk and you just sit down, set your iPhone right next to you and, you know, Amazing. charge up while you're working. That's cool. I, I love this. This is a really cool one. I've seen other ones that just incorporate kind of underneath, but this is the first one I've seen that's actual MagSafe, um, MagSafe certified and everything for right there that's at your pretty, desk. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that makes some cool stuff. I'm, I'm down for that. So I'll put, we'll put links to the, the Alti and the different Journey products in the show notes. Uh, I didn't put it in the notes, but now that I'm thinking about it, since you're talking about charging and stuff like that, I've always been on the search for what is the power bank that I want to carry around with me everywhere. And uh, I've had multiple in the past, things from, like, Mophie and stuff like that. Uh, but I kept seeing this thing around, and I was like, I want to, uh, I want this. I want to know, like, is this as cool as it is? So, anyway, I got the Anchor. This is the Anchor Prime 240-watt power bank. This thing is a beast. It has the two USB-C ports on the top as well as a USB-A port. And you can also get this with a wireless charging base, and you can charge it with the uh, pogo pins down here at the bottom. 100 watt charging wirelessly just by placing it on the base. Very cool. And so this thing has 27,000 milliamp hours. It can charge up to 240 watts, which meaning you could like fast charge your MacBook Pro basically. And uh, you can actually charge this thing up to 170 watts fast. Like if you wanted to charge this power bank from 0%, to 100%. You could do it in 37 minutes by plugging in power to both of these USB-C ports and like just putting a ton of power. Like if you use 200 watt chargers, basically, you can get 170 watts charging on this thing. And it's super cool. And I mean, like it can charge a MacBook Pro, at least a 14 inch from zero to 100 once. It can charge an iPhone like uh, four times, I think. And uh, it's just really cool. It has Bluetooth, so you can like pair it with the Anchor app to like keep an eye on what all the power is doing. And if you like program, it's like really small text, but if you program the battery sizes of your devices, it'll tell you with the current charge, it'll do my iPad Pro one and a half times, my iPhone six times or four times. It's very small. I don't know why they made it so small. But anyway, it's a it's a cool it's a cool power bank, and uh, it's fun to charge it wirelessly, and so it's the power bank to end all power banks, this thing. It's dense, too. It's heavy. Work out with this That's thing. pretty cool. I also like the I'm sending it to you uh, now in Slack, whatever my tab is open. This thing is on sale too for Black Friday, Cyber Monday Ooh. shenanigans. Um, this is the one that I use, and it's got four USB C outputs, four. which is crazy. And yeah, it does uh, a total of 245 watt outputs, but 100 watt on the first two and 65 watt on the second two but it's got like the same it's got a screen right there at the top shows you your exact like input and output going on at the same time really handy i like how skinny it is because it's really easy to slide into the bag but the same capacity 27,000 milliamp hours which i think is like the federally regulated amount for flights and everything so they always make sure you can get them on a plane um but yeah I've, I've, i've been using this one for a while and then they have a a companion uh, 245 watt GAN desktop charger that also can do, you know, 245 watt total output between the ports that also has four USB C ports on it. That's also on sale for Black wow. Friday, Cyber Monday. But um, 
Yeah, these are the ones that, I, that I've been using. But I do, like, I keep seeing the Anchor one. And the one thing that always, like, almost convinces me to buy it is the pogo pins of just setting it down yes. and being yes. done. Um, but, that yeah, I, I like the more fun. ports on it. Uh, I didn't know about this when I I bought the Anchor one because I wanted it. Mm-hmm. And this, the Anchor one, you cannot use it as you charge it if you have it on those pogo oh. pins. I put it on the pogo pins and then plugged in my MacBook, and it was like, sorry, can't charge other <laughs> devices while it's charging. And this one from Hyper literally says charge it as you use it. So yeah. you can charge your other devices as this is charging. Uh, so it looks like feature-wise, <laughs> this thing's probably better. <laughs> I mean, if you want the if you want the cool convenience of like the wireless charging on the anchor thing, uh, you can do that. But it is more expensive, obviously, to do the anchor power bank and the wireless thing. Uh, but I will say, I like the anchor uh, wireless charging base because the charging base itself has two USB C ports and a USB A port. And I always think it's good to have just kind of some open ports to charge stuff on your desk if you just want to quickly plug in an iPad or something. And so if you already if you don't already have ports on your desk, the base is kind of cool because it's off it's that, you know, USB C ports to charge other devices, plus it has the pogo pins for the power bank if you want to do that. But uh, yeah, Andrew trumped me on that one. That was the hyper one is pretty good. <laughs> I'll give you that. All right, well, two... I'm a big fan of uh of chargers and battery packs, so I have oh, used quite a few. I like the <laughs> the Zendor ones for a while, and they also have a really nice one. But they have they've been focusing more on power stations recently, so they haven't had like a new model in a little bit. Um, right. I think what I'm looking for, Stephen, and maybe I don't think I don't think there's any. Is there any at all third party MagSafe battery packs? And I mean actual MagSafe. No, no, I don't think that's there why, is. I, that's yet. why. I st- I still use Apple's MagSafe battery pack. Same easy. And we're still waiting for Qi 2, maybe by the end of this year, like we said in the last episode. But, yeah, still looking for, like, I haven't bought any recently because I'm like, I don't want any of these. Like, none of these are MagSafe. None of these are Qi 2. And so I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens at the end of this year, if any release, or maybe we have to wait till next year. But, yeah, I'm still rocking the Apple MagSafe battery pack. It's a good battery. That's Do all. Do you know what I, hold on, I got to find, I got to find it. Here it is. Oh boy! I I, I bought these. Now, to be fair, like I'm not using them on my main, uh, you know, device anymore because I have, you know, the new iPhones. But sure, I sure. switched all my cables to USB C. But then I have right. things like the MagSafe battery pack, where I need lightning randomly. Right. USB C to lightning adapters, and the one that I got has like even a little clip that attaches to the end of your USB C cable. So when oh, you're not using word. it, it can dangle, and then you just put it on. So I do keep one of these in my, my go bag, so I can keep all USB-C all the time. And then if I have, like, okay, I got a MagSafe battery pack to charge, I can put that on and use it. If these are, you know, oh, wow. sus and I kill my battery pack, whatever, I'm trying to move on from it anyway. So <laughs> Right now, it's on a Black Friday deal you can get it for 7 bucks. That's pretty good, honestly. Not going to lie. <laughs> okay cool i've not gotten any of these i just i can't bring myself to do it but i hear you oh i, meant to... I don't want to bring another cable around i don't want to I... no i get it it's annoying i might actually put one of those on my magic keyboard and keep one around for my mouse then i can get it's rid of my like, cable. yeah it's just like know. it's like clutter like just on your like oh, on yeah. your counter you need that one extra cable for one thing because even though faith is still mm-hmm. on uh 12 pro with lightning oh. she just uses magsafe like she hasn't plugged her phone in in a long time That's i don't think true. so true. we don't need it for phones but like magsafe can't go the other way so, right i mean i guess if i plug it into my phone and used USB C, it could do it that way but yeah that's weird okay you, you gotta upgrade you does she not want to upgrade to like a 15 or anything she's good um she actually is due for an upgrade and if we can mm-hmm. uh I don't know what it's going to cost if we can swing, you know, buy a new phone uh, here before the holidays, but she's due for an upgrade here in December. Hopefully she doesn't listen to this episode. Oh, cause, oh whoops. Uh, I'm, I half want to surprise her, and I've got, like, some, like, cool cases that I've set aside for her. Uh, nice. If, she, nice. If, if we can make the swing to the 15. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I, I think she would like it. I, th- I think she would really yeah, appreciate sure. some of these features. Especially, like, I happen to be working on my... 
uh, 15 today of when we're recording this. We're recording this on Wednesday because of holiday shenanigans. Um, That's right. Today is the, 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 the recording date is the two month of the release date of the 15. So I'll be dropping oh, right. today when we record the two month review of like the iPhone 15 Pro yes. Max. So I'm like going through the features yes. and I like to like, okay, these are the features Apple's hyped. Which ones of them are, you know, duds and which ones of them have I actually liked and used? Uh, right. You know, once you get past the marketing hype. So I'm like, one of my favorite things is honestly the live photo and portrait photos at one time. It's amazing. So right. I think That's she good. would like that a lot. Okay. Uh, no spoilers. Uh, maybe you're not going to get it for her if, in case she's listening. <laughs> Definitely don't plan on it. But anyway, that'd be a good update, 12 to 15. Um, couple things last last few things real quick uh simon salvin listener on x actually was in singapore and found this akara little shop like an akara store and this is like all akara all the time and so he's what's some the pictures. yee light <laughs> i don't know what do you mean with the oh yeah the left side is the yee light professional oh, maybe it is there, there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they got a partnership, but it's a, it's a lot of Akara stuff. Maybe this was yeah. just like a section of a store, but I thought it was cool. I've not seen this kind of like a car. It's a whole display of Akara, yeah. Whole display. There's even a uh, like a home kit. What does it say? Section it's home kit station. Uh, I guess where wow. they have like talks about some of that. Some of that, but a ton of Akara <laughs> products all in one place. I've never seen something like this, and I thought it was pretty cool. He picked up a bunch of devices uh, that he can't get in the UK. I think is which is where he lives. And so he got like the cube, he got the Akara vibration sensor and the, uh, the U 100 lock and uh, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool. So Akara you know, home um, stores. Yeah. So it'll be live because it's scheduled to go out on the 23rd. Akara uh, actually sponsored a video on Apple insider, oh. which was hey. fun to do. So like, like that's extra awesome. shout out to them. Cause I, like, I love when a brand, you know, sponsors that you you legitimately use every single day, and it's like, cool, yes. we're already talking about you. So I guess thank you for you know supporting the channel at the same time. But uh, yes. they're promoting like their video doorbell, their U one hundred door lock, and their presence sensor. So that was just fun to to film That's and cool. everything like that. So if you're curious about those at all, that we'll link that because it'll be for sure live. It's scheduled and everything. So you guys can check that out. That was that was nice of a car to do that, and that was fun to do. That is pretty cool. A car they make good stuff. I, I like a car. I got a lot of their stuff. Well, and finally, uh, before we go, we do have some somber news we'd like to share with the uh, the home Kateer audience. And uh, if you listen to the Apple Insider Show on Friday, you've already heard this. But uh, I've decided myself personally that it's time to to step away from uh, both at the Apple Insider podcast and HomeKit Insider. And I uh, just want all of the listeners to know, like, this was 100%, you know, this is something I'm choosing to do. I have many, many irons in the fire. And, you know, I, maybe I talked about a little over a year ago where, you know, I, trained, I had a major career transition and obviously was moving into this new house. And I just had a lot of stuff going over the past year and trying to evaluate what I'm doing and what I continue to do. And it was one of the hardest decisions I've made. I, I've loved uh, doing the Apple Insider podcast. And honestly, I've loved doing HomeKit Insider with you, Andrew. And, and when it comes to engagement and audience, of all the things that I've done, like such a engaged and like passionate audience when it comes to HomeKit stuff. <laughs> you know, the HomeKit crowd is just the best. And I uh, have really loved uh, doing it and, and doing this and engaging with you all. And so, yeah, uh, we're going to do one more episode. I'll, I'll be here uh, next week. We wanted to give... A little bit of lead time so you guys hear and um thank you all just for listening and and being a part of the show and watching it on the youtube channel and you know andrew and i just i don't know if not on a whim but we you know when we started the show it was like we really love home kit and smart home stuff and there's not a lot i mean there are people obviously talking about home kit and there are other shows and stuff but we thought really we could do something special and i think we did and i think this show has been special and we've had wonderful guests over the years and uh, 182 episodes, I think. This is uh, where we're at. And so, anyway, uh, that's that's what I'm doing, and, and I'll be stepping away. But, again, I just want to thank you, Andrew. I want to thank our wonderful audience, listeners, and viewers. And it's just been a, a wonderful experience. And so, and uh, all, all the... Uh, ble- all the best to Apple Insider, and, and as they continue going on, you know, I've 
started the Apple Insider Podcast in 2015 and then left for a while and came back and graciously was, you know, given the opportunity to do this and the Apple Insider Show. And so it's just been a, a great experience, honestly. And there's there's no reason I'm leaving that's negative or anything with anyone. Uh, it's really just trying to evaluate all the things I'm doing and, and choosing, picking and choosing. And so, yeah, just want to say thank you. And so I'm just doing it with you, Andrew. And, and But we'll do one more and then and we'll call it. Andrew's so mad right now. He's he's just he's <laughs> he's gonna punch me through the screen. <laughs> Maybe one day we can still meet. Maybe one day at CES or something. We've never met in person. Actually, I've never met any of the Apple Insider people in, in person. <laughs> and it, uh, anyway, have you met anybody of the Apple Insider crew? Um, in person? No. It's it's wild. But it, despite not ever meeting in person, I don't know. I've, obviously, we've worked together closely for for multiple years, and so anyway. Sorry, Andrew. I know. It was it was fun. <laughs> I'm a, we need to go before Andrew throws something at me and will somehow hit me from a thousand miles away. I'm not sure. But listeners, if you would like to still engage with us, we have one more show we're going to do together. So if you have questions or comments, we would love to hear from them. And uh, maybe we can do a bigger section of that on, on the next episode. And, of course, you can uh, follow us, you know, follow me, follow Andrew. All of our social media handles are in the show notes. And so you can continue on with us there. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you one more time next time.